Brighter Light, Darker Shadow by Backing into Infinity Read by Oak Shadow 5 This episode contains chapter 10 and 11, so let's get right into chapter 10 A New Sports Festival, Part 2 Summary The second event of the festival happens Bakugo works on a team Izuku becomes a sorcerer Shinzo is... perverted? Izuku vibrated with excitement as Midnight announced the second event of the sports festival. Capture the flag? And it would be in a small-scale urban setting too, thanks to Cementos. The perfect environment to show off the skills he had been cultivating to any underground heroes in the crowd. Kachan! Izuku shouted, turning to his friend who had just received a 1 million point flag for finishing first. Let's team up! Fine by me, nerd! Kachan turns to him, waving Shinzo over as he does. We can split our team two ways, like a hero agency would split between Underground and Limelight. You and Ibex can go get flags as insurance, and I will protect the flag, along with arms if we can get them. Izuku nodded, mumbling to himself as he planned out ways he could attack the teams he could see forming around them. He barely noticed as his teammates recruited Choji to their team, and only looked up as the arena began to rumble and fluidly shape itself into a small city, full of boxy buildings between one and three stories tall. Suddenly, the massive size of the arena was brought into relief, as even the tallest structures were still a good 10 or 15 feet below the lowest row of spectators. The teams were each directed to different buildings from what Izuku could tell by looking at the nearest groups to either side. The building his team was placed in was the tallest around, with a large lightning rod on top and an ironic nod to its high-value occupants. Izuku briefly conferred with Shinzo and decided that they should split up, since Shinzo worked best with traps and Izuku preferred surprise rushdown attacks. A bell sounded throughout the arena, and present Mike screamed from his booth as the game began. Nato was prepared for a lot of things during the second event. He expected Todoroki's team to charge at Bakugo for the million points, and by the sounds outside his building, that was exactly what was happening. He expected around half the teams to rush the top spot, in fact. Since his team had enough points to comfortably move on without even capturing a flag, he planned to bunker down for the first half of the match and then pick off the weakened teams to bolster their score. Kendo was with him, watching the bottom half of the building and ready to warn him if someone tried to storm their two-story fort. His other teammates, Kirishima and Tetsu Tetsu, had said some things about manliness before rushing off. They had at least let Neto copy their quirks first, so he wasn't too upset about their lack of adherence to the plan. Once the timer on his copied quirks ran out, he would know it was time to go on the offensive and start picking off weak teams. It was quite outside the building, and the sounds of fighting were distant, so Nato expected the first part of the plan to go rather smoothly. His assumption was corrected moments later, as he turned around to investigate a thud from behind him. A greenhead form rose from the floor it had dove onto during its entrance via a window, the beams of sunlight from the window glinting off his knives in intimidating fashion. Hello? Midoriya? Nato thought that was his name, but he hadn't put much stock in his sister class since they were obviously inferior, said. I've come to bargain. Bargain? Nato drawled, settling into a fighting stance and calling up Steel. I don't bargain with weaklings, and Class 1A is nothing but... Midoriya nodded sagely, before moving his hands in an odd two-fingered pattern and jumping back out the window. Nato stuck his head out cautiously, but the regretted had seemingly vanished without a trace. Presumably because he knew this wasn't a fight he could win. Nato was a top-tier student after all. Fuck! Nato crumbled to the floor, his head swimming as he crumpled to the floor. Midoriya towered over him, having already circled the outside of the building and come in via the other window. Hello? The other boy whispered, leaning down beside Neto. I've come to bargain. By the time Itsuka came upstairs to plan their offensive strategy with Monoma, their flag was long gone and the blonde was unconscious on the floor. She shook him awake, panic setting in as she realized how far behind them must be by now. Shinzo crept quietly around the edge of the building he was scoping out. As far as he could tell, there were two students inside, the van girl from 1B and a grab-haired kid from Gen Ed who had made it into the top 40. He could hear the boy loudly hitting on the vine girl, who was rebuffing his advancements with what sounded like quotes from scripture. He grinned. An easy target then. Hey, as our tits. Shinzo calls out as he steps through the door of the building. Tits? I would never consider something so vulgar! Both students went slack as Shinzo grasped with his quirk, chuckling softly to himself as he walked past their unresponsive bodies. Taking control of more than one person at a time was a strain on his quirk, but when he didn't need to give them orders like this, it was a lot easier on his brain. He made his way to the flag, 
located in the back of the single story building, and collected it before heading out. Ams was turning out to be the perfect teammate, as much as Katsuki hated to admit it. They were standing with the flag belly lightning rod on top of their building, and so far, the game had been incredibly simple. Arms would use a superior hearing to pinpoint where extras, no, students, were coming from, and then Katsuki would indiscriminately blast them. None of the heavy hitters had reached the building yet, so the first few minutes had been smooth sailing. The ground around the building was pitted with craters and groany classmates, and the roof access stairs had been collapsed. The ground shook for a moment, the air chilled, and suddenly a glacier erupted up the side of the building as Todoroki arrived. Arm shouted a warning, scrambling back from the edge as Katsuki brought both hands to bear. With an echoing boom, the glacier shattered into hundreds of pieces. The arena was only silent for a moment, as Team Todoroki recovered from their failed attempt to scale the building, and the other teams backed off to avoid the crossfire. Distantly, Katsuki registers prison mag shouting at the halfway mark. They are planning an electrical attack, since the ice didn't work, Am says, walking over to join Katsuki near the edge of the building. Todoroki will distract you while Kaminari and Yarozu approach from the ruined stairwell. Those dumb fuckers, Katsuki says gleefully. They're going to play right under our hands. A minute passes, Arms moving back towards the center of the building, as Katsuki amuses himself by taking potshots at Icy Heart structures, pretending to be taken in by the distraction. 30 seconds after that, the stairwell bursts open again from what sounds like a controlled detonation of some form of explosive. Katsuki is impressed. He didn't think Ponytail had the balls for a move like that. Indiscriminate shock! One million volts! Pikachu shouts, lighting up the roof as he based it on electricity. The glow fades after a couple seconds, revealing Pikachu stumbling around drunkenly as Katsuki cackles manically. The lightning rod on the roof had absorbed the shock and grounded it, and Dan's face had wasted his one shot at taking him out. Ponytail emerges from a blanket thing with a look of surprise, and Arms charges towards her. Katsuki watches in amusement as Arms lays a brutal beatdown on the poor girl, knocking her hasty shield and stuff away with his incredibly strong blows. The tentacle teen twists around her guard a moment later and totally takes her down. Todoroki arrives to the roof a moment later, taking advantage of Katsuki's distraction to finally scale the building. He seems shocked to find his team defeated, but quickly steals himself for a fight. Katsuki shatters the first few streams of ice with resounding explosions, Arms moving up to support him. The taller boy is capable of shattering the frozen constructs with his bare hands, and between the two of them, they slowly advance towards Icy Heart. Hi, Kachan, the nut says, popping out of nowhere as usual, a random assortment of flags clutching his fist. I got some flags. Oh, hi, Todoroki. Present Mike calls out the final minute of the match, and Todoroki growls in frustration as his efforts prove futile. 50 seconds later, and the combined efforts of Team Bakugo have driven him to the edge of the roof, Shinzo arriving in the background via the stairs. The match ends just as Izuku's shoulder slams Todoroki off the roof, Katsuki shattering his eyes under him and leave him to awkwardly slide back to the ground in defeat. During the lunch break, Izuku sits with his friends, glad that all of them have made it to the final round. Todoroki's team squeaked by and forth, the original flag guarded by Ochako and giving them enough points to qualify. Team Monoma had recovered as well, the other members managing to capture several flags despite the crushing defeat at home base. The final team had been Idas, who successfully employed the strategy of preying on the other distracted teams, leveraging their speed to make quick work of most of the bases. They had ended up coming in second by a fairly wide margin. That was chapter 10, and now we'll continue on to chapter 11, a new sports festival, part 3. Summary. The first round of the tournament battles commences, and everyone gives their best effort. Disclaimer. Results may vary. Not all best efforts are equivalent. Katsuki walked onto the field for his first match of the tournament confidently. No offense to Tailman, but it wasn't likely that he could challenge Katsuki here. The circular concrete arena had a variety of pillars scattered around it, made of the same aerated and impact-reducing blend that cementers used to make the buildings in the training grounds. Midnight cracked her whip, signaling the start of the match as Katsuki charged forwards, explosions crackling from his hands to launch him into the air. Tailman met him on top of the pillars, jumping rapidly towards him. They exchanged a flurry of blows, Katsuki holding off on any larger explosions in favor of displaying his martial arts prowess. A sweeping kick from the tail teen forces Katsuki to ignite his hands and take flight as he bails off the pillar. Deciding to end the match, he angled his palms towards the boy and it loose a large explosion. Off balance from the kick, 
Ujiro did manage to dodge in time and took the explosion to the chest. He slammed against the pillar and dragged all to the ground as smoke curled from his gi. Katsuki landed and stalked over to him, palms cracking menacingly as he waited to see if the boy would try to rise. He didn't, and Midnight called the match a moment later. Katsuki held out his hand, helping the tailed boy onto the stretcher to go to the infirmary. Kaminori Denki stumbled through the pillars desperately, his mind fuzzy. After a big discharge like the one he just did, it felt like he was thinking through mud. Somewhere near him, he could hear a singed and annoyed Shoji stumbling towards him like a tank, smashing pillars as he goes. His one big blast of electricity had wounded him, but the other teen had shrugged it off with some difficulty and was now hunting him like a rat in the rapidly shrinking arena. Denki flinched as a pillar beside him shattered, turning to face it as he went to dodge. He never saw the three fists striking him from the other side, locking him unconscious swiftly. Hitoshi walks away from the arena, feeling the usual anxiety about using his quirk bubbling around his chest. Tetsu Tetsu stands confused outside the edge of the ring, the match over almost before it began. Baku goes in the tunnel to call him a bad as for beating shitty steel, bringing a small grin to his face. Midoriya drops down from the roof a moment later to congratulate him, and Hitoshi starts to feel more like maybe using his quirk might be okay. Slowly, the roar of the crowd fades back into his ears, and now it sounds more like cheering than judgment. Tenya braces himself, waiting behind a pillar with a clear line on the edge of the arena. His opponent steps around cautiously, and Tenya fires up his engines, rowing across the small space in a low gear. Kirishima never sees it coming, jacked out of the arena before his hardening can do anything to help him. Minutes later, Cyril is similarly helpless, staring in frustration at Todoroki as the audience consoles him. Tenya stands from the audience to go warm up from a geisha near his section. As he makes his way into the stadium, his phone starts to buzz in his pockets. He answers it quickly, since only an emergency call would go through while his phone is silent like this. Nito knew he was a side character. His quirk was one that needed help to power up, and without prior planning and relevant quirks nearby to copy, it was as good as being quirkless. Still, losing to Midoriya in one blow stung his pride a lot. Midoriya fought with even less power than Nato, and losing to him was nobody's fault but his own. So, it fell to Nato to rebuild some of his pride in this match. Yairoso was a fearsome opponent for sure, but Nato had carefully observed her during the first event, just as he had every other member of Class A. There was no point to sandbagging if you didn't gather valuable information after all. It hadn't helped him against the unpredictable gremlin that was Midoriya, but Yairoso had a much more visible weakness for me to exploit. She was unconfident, and slow to make decisions under pressure. To take advantage of this, he had grabbed the perfect storm of quirks right before going out through the arena. Even if he couldn't put her down quickly with this combo, she would likely litter enough weapons and tools for him to scavenge and have a fair shot at defeating her in quirkless combat. Contrary to what his humiliation at Midori's hands would indicate, Nito had extensive training in hand-to-hand, -hand, specifically in martial arts that focused on grappling. His parents were always willing to fund a stream, and Nito's entire life was just relying on others anyways. Midnight's whip cracked and Nito lunged forwards as he drew on his first quirk. His skin darkened, and he slipped into the shadows of the pillars with Kuroiro's shadow. Nito zipped across the arena, quickly approaching where Yarosa was standing, a shield on her arm and her belly sparkling as she prepared something. He dropped the quirk, bursting out of the shadows with a shout. His opponent started in surprise, his sparkles fading as the concentration breaks. Nito pulls his second quirk, yell transforming into a roar as he takes Shishida's beast form and slaps the shield aside. Yarosa stumbles back towards the edge of the arena, I swear with panic and random sparkles running along his stomach as she tried to think of a creation that could save her. Twenty seconds later, Nito held a blade arm to her throat as she yielded. He helped her up after, with only minimal ranting about Class 1B's superiority. His focus drifted from the match to the future, and he could only hope that Midoriya made it through the bracket to face him in the semifinals. Nito shook his head roughly, hands in his pockets as he made his way back to the stands. For now, Todoroki was next. Izuko stepped up to the arena for his match against Mina with a determined look on his face. Just because he planned to go underground didn't mean he was going to throw the festival here. He didn't have a crack to head anyways. In fact, he wanted to do his best to meet Kachan in the finals and prove to the world that the Quirkless could be just as strong as others. The Greenette broke into a run as Midnight's were cracked. He stepped up onto a smaller pillar, performing a series of wall jumps to ascend to the highest point of the small concrete forest in seconds. He crouched 
blades on his arms humming as he lightly thumped the trigger for the shock. Mina passed under him, scattering along and calling his name. Izuku dropped from the pillar silently, landing on her shoulders and twisting. The pink girl overbalanced and slipped, falling backwards onto the ground. Her head cracked against the concrete with a nasty sound, and she stared up at Izuku with unfocused eyes as he pinned her with a knee to the chest. He squeezed the trigger on his left knife, and her eyes spasmed shut as the taser finished knocking her out. The audience was quiet for a moment, not sure what to make of the brutal and anticlimactic fight. Then Iraza had his voice ring out on the PA, congratulating Midoriya for an excellent display of underground heroics tactics, and that set the crowd free. Midoriya walked back to the waiting rooms to a cacophony of cheers, a bright smile on his face as he happily waved to the crowd. Itsuka Kendo was a fearsome opponent for sure, but Ochako had her dead to rights. Even without much combat experience, it wasn't hard to puzzle out that a melee-based fighter would have an incredibly tough time against a contact quirk as strong as hers. It didn't go quite as smooth as Ochako had planned, Kendo was skilled and managed to slam her around a bit without getting touched, but in the end, Ochako managed to wrap her hand around one massive finger and threw the ginger out of the ring before she had a chance to adjust to the change in weight. Uchako giggled happily as she skipped back to her waiting room to text her parents. Now, she only had to beat Midoriya and she'd be on the podium? Her anxiety at his name bubbled in her gut, but she'd been doing great at getting over it in the last two weeks and she was too happy right now to worry about the next match. It couldn't be that bad anyways, right? That was chapter 10 and 11 of Brighter Light Like a Shadow. These two chapters were really good. Like the second round of the sports festival was capture the flag and not a cavalry battle. Yes! And then also the first round of the one-on-one -on -one battles. But anyways guys, I hope you all enjoyed chapter 10 and 11. And I'll see you all next time. Bye!